I tell you, it really almost broke my heart seeing the market fall like it did today after that hot, hot PPI report. But don't worry. Today, we're going to break it down and show you how you can set yourself up to be able to trade even with hot inflation and have no fear. Sound good? Let's go. We're going to do something a little bit different than we've normally done, folks. We're going to have a segment called Tech Talk. Now, what is Tech Talk going to do? It basically, either Neil or myself, will share about a particular indicator or moving average or process that we utilize. And if you have any suggestions on what you would like to see in this section, please let us know. Uh, Neil is going to Tell us a little bit about one of his favorite indicators, which is the MACD. First, just put the Apple daily chart. That is an Apple daily chart. There you go. Okay. In the triple screen system, actually, I'm looking at moving averages, that 8 and 20. I look at MACD and I look at RSI. They all got to go bullish for a buy signal, all got to go bearish for a sell signal. Now, Apple, something is interesting going on here. The Moving averages have gone bearish. The MACD has not only gone bearish, it is below the zero line. And when it goes below the zero line, it's a concern. So right now, Apple is also struggling right there at the 200-day line. I'm watching it very carefully, always in Apple one way or the other, but the direction currently doesn't look good based on moving averages and MACD for it to turn around, I'd at least to see MACD going bullish first and then come above the zero line. Okay. Now, for your perspective, where does your MACD go bullish? That's when the MACD line is crossing the moving average. Like right there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it, and currently it's bearish, but right away where you drew the circle, that's the where it goes bullish. Now, I know some people take when the histogram turns around either way to be a clue that things could be changing. Do you yes, utilize that? Absolutely. That's right. But I wait. I, I want it to go really lines to cross. Okay. Then, then have the confidence. And then the other thing that I've, I've noticed is that this cross here also coincides with the cross on the, the chart. So that gives you an indication of where and how you want to take action then. Yeah. And usually when things are turning around, MACD goes bullish first. Okay. And then soon after that, RSI comes in and then moving averages is the final say. Now, what about when you get a situation like this over here, where you've got the price action making lower lows, however, your MACD has in fact put on a bullish divergence or a positive divergence. All right. And there, if you can see the entire MACD at that time is below the zero line. Below the zero line, even if the overall MACD trend is positive, I don't trust it. I want it to cross the zero line and then tell me the story. Because here, as soon as it went above the zero line, look at what happened to the price action. Okay. So that when it goes above the zero line, that's here? Okay. Now that's on the that's on the cross. Okay, excellent. Now it's time to start looking at stocks. The stomachs in the news this week was Apple. Is it a buy? I don't know. Let's see what Anil has to say about it. And Anil's stock for this week is Apple. So what's up with Apple? They have come up with this new Vision Pro, which is the first new product since Apple Watch, but there are some concerns about that, and maybe that's what's reflected in the price. Okay. And you said there's a story on it on IBD or yeah, something? There, yeah, so let's go check out that story real quick. And the story is right here. Weakness in Apple stock provides opportunity for bear call spreads. <laughs> that, that's never a good thing if you're, you're bullish, right? Okay, excellent. So right now, you say you own Apple, but are you looking to sell it? Are you looking to hold it? Are you looking to enter more Apple? Currently, I'm waiting. Um, most of my Apple holding in the air. Therefore, it gives me added freedom to do what I want. But I'm, I'm going to 
right through the daily signal. But if I get a weekly signal, that's a concern. Uh, okay. And I might get out and wait for another daily buy signal. Gotcha. This is a slightly different way we're covering the stocks, because we're going to cover the stocks that are currently in the news and not necessarily one to set up. Well, we know that crypto is hot as can be. Let's take a look at Coinbase and you'll see, wow, it's taken off. So where do we get on this rocket ride? Let's find out in this next slide. We want to hit on stocks like Coinbase. Today they had earnings that it basically jumped up and we've been getting a stellar run in some of the crypto trades. And this has taken off from when it broke out down here. Give you an idea. It has run all the way up here about 53%. Now that 53, 54% has been done in seven trading days, guys, seven trading days. So recognize Coinbase is a volatile entity, but it does have weekly options. What am I looking at Coinbase doing? If this is the new swing high, then I can rip this down here and look at, I want it to go back down into my Magic Fib box. There's the magic fib box. And that is basically the 618 and it's, and it's bounded on the other side by the 38.2. Anywhere in there or approaching that area would be a place where we could potentially bounce from. It will also coincide with where the moving averages are. Matter of fact, at the current projection, the moving average is gonna be very rapidly over the 50% uh, percent retracement so that's telling me that on a powerful pullback or a pullback that would support the uptrend, I'd be looking for a pullback into that, just that top section of the Magic Fib box. And what else do we have on this on Coinbase? Here's a great article on it. It talks specifically about Coinbase spikes, and it goes into a lot of the stuff. It had what they call diluted earnings of 1.04. And that is a direct improvement from section $2.46 loss it had last year. Notice what it says over here. Consumer transaction revenue rose by 60%. And the basic subscription is moving on up. If you're looking in the crypto space, also look at the crypto ETFs. And right now, the number one ETF in crypto is IBIT. And then the second one is Fidelity's FBTC, that somebody asked a question about last week. So Coinbase, that's where I would buy it. And I will be patient and wait because if you don't wait, it'll be a killer for your portfolio if you don't wait until you get a proper setup. Hey, if you're looking for a great routine, this gives you a easy to follow routine. It's called the Precision Entry Point Routine. And it's available on my training site. And I'll put the link in the description on that. It's a good foundational approach to applying the autopilot trading service. Hey, our journey is just beginning. So if today's odyssey or today's trip did spark some flames within you, please remember to subscribe to the channel. And there will be a video that pops up here that'll take you to some more training stuff. I did a full length video on Tesla. And then we're offering some new stuff. Every Wednesday, I'll be putting out a live stream. I'm going to invite you live. It'll be totally unabridged. You can ask me anything about trading. I will answer it. If I don't know the answer, I won't blow smoke up your skirt. I will basically say, I don't know the answer to that. We can go find the answer. What that Wednesday's for is to show you what the final hour routine is that I follow. It's sharing that simply to help people develop their own routine. Remember, market secrets are reserved for those who seek simplicity. And there's a sophistication of simplicity that can be applied to life. Will you be one of them? I want to remind everybody that all the materials we do present are for training purposes. Traders should always be able to trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. Past performance is not an indication or a promise of future performance.